joint is the connection between two bones. Joints and their surrounding structures allow you to bend your elbows and knees, wiggle your hips, bend your back, turn your head, and wave your fingers to say bye-bye. Yes, joints help you to enjoy your daily activities, but pain and swelling in these joints can take that joy away. Understand what causes painful joints and how to prevent and manage them here on Dynamic Living The Total You. and listeners we are very much honored this day to have with us a specialist at alam naman po natin na sa buhay natin lahat na pag tayo ay nagkakaroon na ng edad ay hindi natin pwedeng sabihin walang aray no yung ating mga tuhod ang ating mga kasukasuan at ang ibang parte ng ating katawan ay nagkakaroon kahit papaano ng karamdaman yan at ngayong hapon na po ay we will be discussing it and for us to be able to understand and get to know, get to the bottom of the story behind rheumatology. We have with us Dr. Ina Abelia. She's a specialist in rheumatologist, in rheumatology. Magandang araw sa'yo, Ina. Hi, Jean. Good to see you. Yes. I'm happy to be here. And of course, to discuss your specialty. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Ina, ito bang rheumatology? Ano ito? Ang rheumatology ay isang uh, speciali specialty sa medicine na involved sa musculoskeletal diseases. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin yung mga joints, yung mga litid, yung mga muscles, at pati yung mga autoimmune disorders. So minsan, um, hindi masyadong uh, familiar ang mga tao sa rheumatology, pero ito'y madaming involved na sakit, katulad ng mga osteoarthritis, gouty arthritis, at saka lupus. Mm -hmm. So, importante na maibahagi natin sa mga taon, sa mga nanonood, kung ano ang rheumatology. Yes, kasi mm -hmm. minsan, eh, there's this misconception mm -hmm. na kapag masakit yung aking tuhod, o kaya yung aking kasukasuan, mm -hmm. o kaya hindi ako makabangon ng maganda sa umaga, alam mo, mm -hmm. lahat tayo, pupunta naman tayo dyan eh. Diretso, pupunta ako ng orthopedic, mm -hmm. uh, orthopedic surgeon, or orthopedist, they call them sometimes like that. Yeah. Kasi sa kanila ay, eh, ah, baka yung buto ko lang, yun yung may sakit, uh -huh. hindi naman pala. Oo, minsan nga nakakalungkot isipin na hindi pa alam ng maraming tao yung rheumatology. Mm -hmm. So, ang mabuti kung nire-refer sa amin ng orthopedic surgeons yung mga pasyente may rheumat rheumatism, may arthritis, mm -hmm. pero sometimes hindi. Mm -hmm. So, it's very good na maibahagi ang kaalaman ng rheumatology sa lahat ng mga nanonood okay. sa atin. We'll start off with, uh, you know, ano yung pinaka-common na nakikita mo sa clinic mo na pumupunta sa'yo yung pasyente? Um, Karani, one day will tell you, Doktora, may rayuma ako. Mm -hmm. Sila mismo din Sila na diagnose. Sila mismo nagsasabi, uh -huh. pero we have to differentiate ano ba yung rayuma. Kasi mm -hmm. yung rayuma, it's just a layman's term. Kasabihan lang yun ng tao na may masakit sa tuhod, may masakit sa laman, may masakit sa litid. Mm -hmm. So pag ang tanong, may rayuma ka ba? At sinabing may masakit sa kanya, tama, may rayuma. But we have to identify kung ano yung klase ng rayuma meron. Kasi merong masakit ang kasukasuan, which is arthritis, mm -hmm. may masakit na litid, which is tendinitis, may masakit na laman, mm -hmm. o kaya muscle fibromyalgia. So, importante to differentiate anong klase ng rayuma meron yung pasyente. Mm -hmm. At saka kasi, magbabago din kasi ang gamutan Treatment. nila, di ba? Oh, oh. And uh, kasi minsan, ang tao, mahilig ang Pinoy kasi, Dr. Aina, eh, mahilig na, ay, si kapitbahay ko, Yan. may rayuma, oh, oh. uminom siya ng ganito, tama. baka tama din sa akin yun. <laughs> which is mali, uh -huh. kasi lahat, halos lahat ng mga gamot for rayuma, may mga side effects. Mm -hmm. So, if you continue taking all those medications, pwedeng maapektuhan ang bato, pwedeng maapektuhan ang mga kidneys, mm -hmm. tsaka ang mga atay. So, importante, magpatingin talaga sa doktor mm -hmm. para malaman muna na kung ano yung klase ng rayuma o arthritis meron ang pasyente kasi iba-iba nga ang gamot sa bawat rayuma at arthritis. At para gumaling sila. At para gumaling. Uh -huh. Oo. Kasi paano nga naman gagaling kung mali yung iyong yes. binibigay? Panay, baka panay pain relievers lang ang binibigay uh -huh. para sa sakit lang pero hindi ina-address yung cause.
cost, uh -huh. yung root cost nung, yung pananakit nung joints. So, simulan na natin. So, sabi mo, rayuma, it's an all-encompassing yeah. word. So, it's uh, a layman's, layman's term. term. Uh -oh. So, we'll start with the most common, which is uh -oh. osteoarthritis. Yes, it's the most common uh -huh. talaga. Ang osteoarthritis ay isang sakit sa kasukasuan or Pwede sa mga joints. Dr. Ito ay isang model as very simple model ng right knee ng mm. tuhod no. Ang nangyayari sa osteoarthritis, kung baga ito yung cartilage or cushion, mm -hmm. parang cushion ng ating mga buto kasi ito ito buto 'yan at saka mm -hmm. ito buto. So pagka nagagamit ng matagal sa pag-edad, mm -hmm. nauubos or numipis yung langis at saka yung kudyon sa pagitan ng mga buto. Pag umiidad na. Pag umiidad. Uh -huh. Oo. Dahil siguro sa kakagamit mo. Sa kakagamit at saka minsan familial. Ibig uh -huh. sabihin, if you have a family history of osteoarthritis, um, mas malaki yung chance mo na magkaroon ng osteoarthritis. Uh -huh. Ano pa yung iba? Pag mas mabigat. Uh -huh. So the heavier you are, can you imagine na pagka mabigat ang weight mo, yung buto mo was made to carry only an ideal body weight. If you're five, like a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. If you're more than a hundred pounds, kunyari, 130 pounds, mm -hmm. 30 pounds araw-araw ang dinadala ng mga joints mo. So, madaling numipis uh -huh. yung mga cushion o cartilage sa pagitan ng mga buto. Kaya pala, Dr. Raina, mm -mm. isa sa mga palagi natin naririnig, eh, mm -mm. kailangan pong magpapayat po kayo, misis, oh, oh. para po medyo mabagaan-gaan dyan. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, isa yun sa mga parang mainstay mm -hmm. in the treatment of osteoarthritis. Uh -huh. Kasi even if you give mga pain medications, even if you give Uh, yung disease-modifying mm -hmm. anti-rheumatic drugs, pag yung weight is mabigat pa rin, patuloy ang pag-degenerate mm -hmm. ng cartilage. So, yan, pakita mo, tuloy mo, Dr. Raina. Oo. Oh. Kung baga yung osteoarthritis, yung ito sa pagitan na parang orange na yan, mm -hmm. serve as parang langis o kudyon ng ating mga buto. Pag sinabi nating osteoarthritis, numinipis na yung langis mm -hmm. at nawawala yung kudyon. So, halos buto sa buto, ang, ang nagkikis-kisan, mm -hmm. kumbaga, pag naglalakad. So, ibig sabihin nun yung friction, grabe. Yung friction, grabe, uh -huh. di ba? Can you imagine, parang sa kotse, yung langis, wala na, mm -hmm. tapos galaw lang siya ng galaw. Ang sakit. Kaya yung minsan, sasabihin ng pasyente, ang daming naririnig na tunog, yung mm -hmm. parang nagkiklik ba yung mm -hmm. sound, eh kasi wala na yung langis. And is it really a reality, Dr. Aina, mm -hmm. na may naririnig sila nagkaklik yung Meron sound? Meron talaga, yun? that's what we call crepitus, mm -hmm. sa pagitan ng buto. Even on physical examination, pag hinahawakan, mm -hmm. tapos i-extend, i-flex, talagang mararamdaman mo yung lagutok uh -huh. ng mga buto. Uh -huh. So, importante talaga yung, pati this is, uh, ano, i-modify mo yung activity mo. Mm -hmm. Not too much walking up and down the stairs. When you have it already. When you have it already. Pero unahin muna natin. Mm -hmm. So, pinakita mo na yung model sa ating mga tagapagpanood. Uh -huh. Inexplica mo kung bakit ano kahalagahan noon. Mm -hmm. So, dear viewers, we're still talking about osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis, ha? which is so, very common. Very common. Mm -hmm. So, ano ang pinaka-common na edad na kikita ang osteoarthritis? Usually, 50s and above. Mm -hmm. And it's more common among females. Kesa lalakihan. Kesa lalakihan, mm -hmm. oo. Pero meron ding osteoarthritis na because of the nature of the work. Kunyari, yung mga athletes na mm -hmm. basketball, nagkakaroon ng previous injury, na pre-predispose sila or mas maaga sila magkaroon ng osteoarthritis mm -hmm. compared sa mga walang ganong previous history so, of injury or trauma. So, ibig sabihin, Dr. Ina, yung mga, yung mga sports yes, people, oo. you know, the sportsman. Kaya, di ba, dapat maganda yung mechanics, yung pagtakbo mo, tama yung mm -hmm. pagtakbo, tama yung pagjog. Kasi kung hindi, it's a constant pressure on the mm -hmm. joints. Eh, mm -hmm. ang knee is a weight-bearing joint. That's true. So, Parang mas mabilis na magkaroon ng osteoarthritis ang mga pasyenteng may ang mga taong may previous history of injury or trauma. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. ayun, nauuna natin na pagka-50 hanggang 60, mas yeah. mataas siya. Mm -hmm. Mga babae din, na mas, mas mabigat. Mas mabigat. Oh. Oh. So, ano pang mga pwedeng mangyari? Like, for example, ano pa ang predisposition niyan para sa kanya na magkaroon siya niyan? Para ngayon, yung mga nanonood dati na medyo mas bata pa, mag-iisip na na, ah, pag ganito ang aking gagawin, heto yon oh, O kaya oh. pag hindi. Oh. So, importante rin na meron tayong regular form of exercise. Mm -hmm. Kasi pag may exercise, exercise, pinapalakas niya yung mga muscles that support the bone. Mm -hmm. So, kunyari, itong mga muscles na nakapaligid dyan, pag malakas siya, kahit na yung trauma sa bone, eh, pa paulit-ulit, nasusuportahan ng muscles. Mm -hmm. So, if you have weak muscles, mas madaling magkaroon ng osteoarthritis. So, actually, it should be a lifestyle change para maiwasan yung, mm -hmm. ano, yung osteoarthritis. Dapat malalakas yung mga muscles, dapat ma-maintain yung ideal body weight, so mm -hmm. dapat may regular form of exercise. Pero ano ang nararamdaman ng pasyente, Dr. Ina? Like, for example, let's start with mm -hmm. pagbaguhan pa lang siyang naging ganyan. Eh. Mm -hmm. May mararamdaman na baka agad siya. Kasi, we're trying to tell 
tell our viewers na you have what we call a warning signals. Yes, eh, okay. Na heto alerts ito na I have mm -hmm. to, you know, seek consultation. Okay. Ang unang reklamo ng mga pasyente, kunyari mm -hmm. for osteoarthritis, pag matagal na hindi gumagalaw, mm -hmm. Yung naka-steady lang. Naka-steady, whether nakaupo, nakahiga, uh -huh. o nakatayo, yung first movement, parang ano bang tawag nito, may, mabagal, uh -huh. parang may stiffness. Ang tawag namin doon, gelling phenomenon. Uh -huh. Yung unang tayo ba, mahirap, pero uh -huh. pag nailakad-lakad niya na ng kaunti, nawawala ng kaunti yung stiffness. So when they have that, uh -huh. even as young as they are at 55 or 60, yes. eh, kailangan they should already start thinking na, Oops, baka meron May beginning ako. osteoarthritis. Uh -huh. Importante yun. Kasi yung mga signs na namamaga, yung mga signs na sobrang masakit, parang late stage na yun. Mm -hmm. So, ang, ang pinaka-common na reklamo initially for osteoarthritis is yung uh, pain on after prolonged immobility or mm -hmm. stiffness after prolonged immobility. Pag unang tayo, hirap, mm -hmm. parang kotse na mm -hmm. kailangan nag-warm up ka muna bago mo pinaandar. Uh -huh. So, ang sinasabi nga namin sa kanila minsan, parang igalaw-galaw nyo muna yung tuhod nyo bago, kunyari, tatayo na kayo in five minutes, mag-extend flex ng tuhod para makalakad ng mahusay. Mm -hmm. So, on. ibig sabihin nun, Dr. Reina, eh, kailangan, pag naramdaman nila yan, mm -hmm. kailangan magpatingin sila kasi posible nga. Para ma-evaluate. Para ma-evaluate oh, na kagad. Oh. Is there such a thing as Dr. Reina na yung pagkain nila at mm -hmm. yung activities nila will have an impact? Like for example, we do get to hear people say na, ay bawal yan kainin, mm -hmm. ay bawal ito kainin kasi baka meron kang ganito. Is it also applicable to osteoarthritis? Yan ang isang bagay na gusto ko talagang i-emphasize mm -hmm. kasi sa osteoarthritis talaga, Walang bawal na pagkain. Hindi mm -hmm. ang pagkain ang nagkukos ng pananakit at pamamaga ng joint. Mm -hmm. Okay? Siguro, pag tinatanong nga ako ng mga pasyente, Doktora, may bawal bang kainin for osteoarthritis? Ang sinasagot ko, bawal kumain ng madami. <laughs> Kasi pagka kumain ng madami, magigay ng weight, mahihirapan. Uh -huh. Pero yung mga sinasabi, pag sinabi, may arthritis ako, bawal daw ang munggo. Hindi yun. Bawal ang mani. Bawal ang mani, uh -huh. bawal ang sitaw, bawal ang... Hindi talaga. Uh -huh. It's not, it doesn't bawal, have anything bawal to do. Bawal daw ang nito, doktora? Maybe sa gout because but of the not, high... Not for not. osteoarthritis. Uh -huh. For osteoarthritis talaga, there's, walang, there's no bawal uh -huh. na food. Basta wag mo dadamihan lang. Oo, wag kumain ng madami. <laughs> <laughs> Para <laughs> ma-maintain yung ideal uh -huh. body. Importante yung you maintain your ideal body weight. You make your muscles strong. Palakasin mm -hmm. yung mga muscles. At saka have a regular physical activity. Mm -hmm. Kasi makakatulong talaga. Is there such a thing as complications for untreated or prolonged osteoarthritis? Uh, what can happen is because of the severe pain, mm -hmm. tapos mawawala na yung langis at kudyon, they won't be able to walk anymore to the point that they would have an knee surgery. Mm -hmm. Yung ire-replace na may mga pasyente na when you do x-rays, talagang sobra na yung uh, dikit ng dalawang buto. Wala nang space talaga sa pagitan. And sobrang in pain sila Sobrang yan. in pain na it stops them from doing their activities of daily living, which we don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. Kasi di ba, we want people to be able to do their regular activities of daily living. Is there also preventive here? I mean, like, mm -mm. for any other disease conditions, di ba, prevention is always better than, yes. you know, mm -hmm. being, uh, to be treatment. treated. Eh. Uh -huh. So, is there such a thing as preventive also for osteoarthritis from happening? Yes. Ang, sa osteoarthritis, Arthritis nga, I always tell my patients, it's not yung sakit na delikado. It's not life-threatening, but it can be frustrating. Kasi there's no medication that I can give you na sabihin ko, hindi nasasakit ulit yan, babalik ang buto sa dati. So the best way to, to prevent this is a prevention talaga, mm -hmm. rather than cure. Mm -hmm. Kasi if you are able to maintain your ideal body weight, if you're able to do regular physical exercise para ma mapalakas mm -hmm. yung mga muscles mo, I think that's the best way to prevent Pero it. Pero in, in the event na you have a very strong family history because mm -hmm. you mentioned that a while ago, yeah. what can mm -hmm. the person do para naman na malesan yung impact ng sakit sa kanya? Oh, meron na rin naman mga gamot na tinatawag na parang supplement, mm -hmm. yung mga glucosamine sulfate. Oh, may mga studies that it has very good results sa ni osteoarthritis but the thing is for osteoarthritis talaga it's a lifestyle change mm -hmm. so lahat ba ng buto ng katawan pwedeng magkaroon ng osteoarthritis or is it just the big bones the like, big bones uh, the weight bearing the weight joints, bearing joints. Oo, as madalas na yun yung mga naaapektuhan pero may tinatawag na hand osteoarthritis mm -hmm. Yung hand osteoarthritis, it's more of familial. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, if you have somebody in the family who has it, mas maano na magkaroon ka ng hand osteoarthritis. It doesn't even have to do with work. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It can happen kahit sa mga hindi naglalaba, hindi mm -hmm. nagtatay, pero namamana kasi mm -hmm. yun. So, kasama pa rin yung hand osteoarthritis. Uh -huh. Pero ito, Dr. Reina, mm -hmm. you mentioned something about the medications for mm -hmm. osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. So, ito mga medications na to, is it going to be lifelong? I mean, forever na talagang inumin na nila yan? Or they can be removed once, the, you know, they are highly capable of being functional at wala na yung pain? At pangatlo, eh, ano mga complications usually that may arise from the treatment? Mm -hmm. Ang karaniwang kasing ginagamit ng mga gamot for osteoarthritis are pain relievers. Kasi yun talaga yung symptom ng, ng osteoarthritis. So, it's not helpful, it's not healthy to be taking pain relievers all the time. Mm -hmm. Kasi we all know lahat ng pain relievers, whether it's just um, acetaminophen or paracetamol or anti-inflammatory um, medications, lahat may side effects sa bato. Mm -hmm. So, it's not good to be maintaining patients on pain medications all the time. So, usually, pagka na-control na yung pain, we ask the patients to take it only as necessary. Mm -hmm. So, it's at not saka a siguro, maintenance thing. At saka siguro, Dr. Reina, mm -hmm. eh, yun, di ba, kaya nagkakaroon ng mga bleeding ulcers, gastritis, yeah, oh, it's Yung mga pag-inom ng mga diba? pain relievers. Oh, oh. Oh. Tsaka yung mga pasyente na they will just take yung sinabi ng kapitbahay, <laughs> tapos they will come to you, may problema na sa kidney. Mm -hmm. So, it limits the treatment options, even for just osteoarthritis. And do you get to see quite a number of them na they come into you because, you know, it's already because of the side effects of yes. the medications. Oh, oh yes. Uh -huh. So when uh, I usually take uh, yung mga blood exams for mm -hmm. osteoarthritis, kahit na osteoarthritis lang, kasi I know that these patients have been taking yung mga gamot na para sa inflammation mm -hmm. at saka sa maga. Mm -hmm. So pag tinake mo yung function ng kidney, like yung creatinine, matataas mm -hmm. na. So may mga pasyente yung ganun. So sasabihin mo sa kanila, well, limited na yung mga gamot na pwede nating inumin. So, kumbaga, eh, they should not do that. Kasi they should it will consult first consult a doctor first oo, before taking para ma -evaluate. any... Kasi iba-iba talaga yan eh. Yung, yung somebody, something that will work sa kapitbahay may not work for you mm -hmm. and may not even be the right medication dun sa condition mo. That's true and oo, it will oo. prolong some more, no? Yeah. The, the agony mm -hmm. that you have. Mm -hmm. Now, sabi mo kanina, Dr. Ina, eh, osteoarthritis on one end, gouty arthritis at another end. Mm -hmm. Marami din ba ikaw mga patients madami. sa pupunta sa'yo niya? Sa Pilipinas, madami. Ang incidence rate ng gouty arthritis is mataas. Mm -hmm. Maybe because also of our food, mahilig tayo sa mga this lambang time, loob. This Yon, time, yan yung affected by food. Meron intake. ng, meron uh -huh. ng bawal. Uh -huh. Pero ang mga munggo, hindi pa rin bawal. <laughs> <laughs> ang absolutely bawal talaga sa gout is alak, uh -huh. lalo na beer. So, bawal talaga yung alcohol sa pasyenteng may gout. Mm -hmm. And then, yung high-protein diet, yung mga red meat masyado, mm -hmm. mga lamang loob. But the munggo, I think, uh, it's the sabay ng munggo. Kunyari, ilalagyan mo ng chicharon yung munggo, yung mga ganun kaya ba? Siya Oo, kaya siya natitrigger. Oo, kaya natitrigger. So, sasabihin niya si munggo may dahilan. Yes, uh -huh. so yun, yun, it's a misconception. We uh -huh. want also to correct that. Uh -huh. So, it's not... Like, every, pag sinabi kasi, meron akong namamagang kasukasuan, sasabihin ng kapitbahay, bawal na yung munggo sa'yo. Hindi talaga. Pwede kang kumain ng munggo. Ang bawal alak, lalo na beer. Uh -huh. At saka yung mga karne, yung masyadong mga lamang loob. Mm -hmm. At mga, yung mga sardines na maliliit, yung mga makerel, mm -hmm. yung mga... Bawal yun. Bawal yun. Mga dilis. Yun, mga dilis. Ako, paboritong paborito ko yan. Pag wala ka namang gout, pwede. Uh -huh. Oo. Napakasarap nun, ha? Oo nga, lalo na, na. <laughs> lalo na pagka isaw-saw mo sa Tas suka, suka at, at saka may kamatis. Oo, oh, sinigang. 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 Oh, oh, na bigas. No. Ako, masarap yun. So, oh. yung gout, the arthritis, eh, kasing edad din ba? nang nasa osteoarthritis age hindi. hindi. Sa, sa edad, may kaibahan din ng osteoarthritis. Diba sa osteoarthritis, older yung age group mm -hmm. natin at most commonly sa mga babae. Mm -hmm. Sa gout naman, younger age group at most commonly sa mga lalaki. Ah, so this time, baliktad. Oo, oh, baliktad. Oh. That's good so, news. So, mga 30 years old, oh. minsan mga 25, 30, 40, may mga gout uh -huh. na yan. Tsaka mga lalaki. Uh -huh. So, very common na when they come into the patient, pag yung lalaki ng mga 35, uh -huh. tas malalaki yung mga katawan, tas hindi talaga makalakad. Tapos uh -huh. sabihin, doktora, sobrang sakit talaga na, na they ask for a wheelchair. Ha, ganun uh -huh. kasakit. Kasi sa lahat ng klase ng arthritis, gout ang pinakamasakit talaga. Talaga? Uh -huh. Madampian lang ng kumot, uh -huh. sobrang painful. Minsan nilalagnat pa sila sa, dahil sa sakit, sa sobrang uh -huh. inflammation. Pero heto naman, eh, ano din, weight-bearing joints din or ah, malaking buto? Ang mga madalas na naapektuhan sa gout ay yung, meron tayong uh -huh. ito. Pwede natin na yes, ipakita natin naman yan. itong chart na to. Ito yung mga karaniwang mga joints na involved sa uh -huh. Gout, yung sa first big toe, yung ankles, 
yung mga tuhod saka yung sa mga kamay at saka sa elbows. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung mga karaniwang involved sa gout. At saka masasabi mo lang na gout pag namamaga talaga. Mm -hmm. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-diagnose ng gout na pain lang. There should be objective signs of inflammation like pamamaga, mainit, mapula at madampian lang ng kubot. Sobrang masakit mm -hmm. na. That's the most painful sa lahat. Uh, yun talagang when they come in, they will tell you, gawin nyo na lahat ng gusto nyong gawin sa akin para ma mabawasan nyo o yung ma-relieve yung pain. Uh -huh. So that's the most, ano, pinakamasakit talaga sa lahat ng klase Familial ng arthritis. Familial din siya, Doktora? Meron, namamana siya, usually sa lalaki nga. So you ask from the history, do you have your tatay mo ba may gout? Mm -hmm. O kaya yung lolo mo o tito mo, sino sa mga pamilya nyo ang may gout? So there's now we can we can readily see no mm -mm. if you really compare osteoarthritis and gouty arthritis mm -hmm. there's kind of quite a difference eh. mm -hmm. so hindi siya po pwedeng ma-misdiagnose oh, oh. di ba kasi Mad madalas may, ano madali namang ipagibahin ano uh -huh. ba yon i-diagnose I -diagnose. kung alin ang osteoarthritis uh -huh. kung alin ang from history um, and clinical uh, history and clinical presentation uh -huh. so uh -huh. hindi na kailangan ng mga laboratories niyan or x-rays or kailangan niyo din gawin yon ah uh, kailangan din gawin kaya lang sa unang pagtingin sa pasyente hindi naman kinakailangan na meron kang uh, kompletong laboratories mm -hmm. bago mo masabing osteoarthritis po ang sakit niyo or gouty arthritis kasi from the history and physical examination and clinical presentation masasabi mm -hmm. mo na, na most likely gout yung sakit mm -hmm. niyo kasi pag nagpresent kunyari sa first big toe na sobrang mapula parang uh -huh. nangangamatis uh -huh. na ano gout na yon gout hindi yun gouty arthritis hindi yun osteoarthritis uh, 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 bakit naririnig natin na pag mm -hmm. sinabi nila o pag sobrang lamig ng panahon parang mm -hmm. na naaano ako, parang sumasakit yung aking mga kasukasuan. Mm -mm. Is it the real to, reality to that? Oo, there's a reality to that because any, yung cold weather or temperature, it uh, parang pinapalala niya yung sakit. Mm -hmm. Hindi siya yung dahilan nung sakit, but it, the, it makes the pain more. Parang mm -hmm. it increases the pain. Hindi siya yung dahilan, mm -hmm. pero yung feeling ng pain, mas maras, mas, madadama mo ma, uh -huh. kapag ka malamig. Uh -huh. So in terms mm -hmm. of management naman niya, Dr. Aina, mm -hmm. pareho lang ba sila ni osteoarthritis or iba din, very specific din ang targeted therapy mo for an gouty arthritis? Oh, magkaibang magkaiba. Uh -huh. Kaya nga sinasabi namin, importante to differentiate between the different arthritis para mm -hmm. malaman specifically kung ano yung may maintenance at kung ano yung walang may maintenance. Like for gout, ito yung sasabihan mo yung mga bawal. Mm -hmm. Kasi pag tinanong may bawal po ba? Oo, meron. Yun. Tapos merong mga gamot na pang pababa ng uric acid mm -hmm. na para ma-maintain na level, tama yung level ng uric acid. Tsaka mas very aggressive ang treatment sa gouty arthritis because it's really very painful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes pag may effusion or nagtutubig yung joint, mm -hmm. uh, importante na matanggalan ng tubig. Yan ba, yung, yan ba yung kaya nila sinasabi na tinutusukan Oo. Yung, yung dito sa manismo Oo. para may tatanggalin. Tatanggalin yung sa excess fluid. Yun. Uh -huh. yeah. Usually sa gouty arthritis. It can happen also with osteoarthritis but it's not as often at hindi ganun kasakit. Pero when it's gout because of the severe pain, talagang kailangan yung immediate ba na relief, tanggalan ng tubig para mawala yung sakit ka. Bakit siya magkakaroon ng tubig doon sa gitna, Dr. Raina, mm. na sabi natin eh, yung cartilage mo, yung cushion mo doon, mm -hmm. so numinipis yun siya. Bakit sa gouty, eh, magkakaroon ka ng fluid accumulation Because doon? of the severe inflammation. Mm -hmm. Oo. So, um, uh, yung mga cells of inflammation, nakaka nandoon. Tsaka yung deposition ng uric acid crystals. Mm -hmm. Na minsan, pag tinanggal mo yung tubig sa tuhod, makikita mo sa micro scope talagang merong monosodium urate crystals. Sino sa kanila ang ano, yung kumbaga kailangan i-inject mo to relieve the pain o kaya bigyan ng steroids para matanggal yung pain? Is it gouty or is it osteoarthritis? It's more commonly sa gout, uh -huh. but it can happen also sa osteoarthritis. But na are there indications? Like for example, kasi uh -huh. yung viewers natin, baka sasabihin uh -huh. nila na ay tuwing namamagay ang kailangan ng injection. Hindi naman ganun, di ba? Hindi naman. Kasi uh -huh. kunyari, um, yung pasyente is already a regular patient of yours. Uh -huh. Tapos, alam mo na na gout siya. Ang importante kasi na ma-differentiate sa gout sometimes is yung septic arthritis, mm -hmm. yung arthritis na dahil sa infection. So if you're sure about the patient having gout, tapos hindi naman ganun kasevere yung inflammation, sa gamot lang pwedeng makontrol sa colchicine, mm -hmm. sa steroids, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. Imbis na tusok ka agad. Mm -hmm. What are the possible complications if untreated yan, aside sa severe, severity of the mm -hmm. pain? Nagkakaroon din ng deformity kasi mm -hmm. nasisira, nagkakaroon ng bony erosions. Yung chronic deposition ng uric acid crystal sa synovium mm -hmm. or sa joint can cause erosion sa buto. 
So, nagkakaroon ng pagsira din ng joint itself. So, nagkakaroon ng disability or deformity from that. At yung pinaka nakikita rin natin, yung mga tofay, mm -hmm. yung mga malaking bukol na ang laman ay uric acid crystals, it can deposit in the joints. Pangiting na yun Pangiting ha, doktor. Pangiting na, na, hindi na sila nakakasuot ng uh -huh. shoes. Hindi na, kasi Minsan pati mo, tenga, merong meron, tofay. Oo, oh, oh. oh. so... Minsan nga yung mga pasyenteng bata, pati mga kamay. Dito sa kamay nila. Yes, they want to undergo surgery kasi uh -huh. hindi na nila nagagawa yung trabaho nila. Uh -huh. Hindi na nakakagamit ng shoes. So, yung mga toe fine. Pero you know what? Mm -mm. The, the thing there with all of this no, is yung debilitation. Mm -hmm. Para bang you, you are hampered from doing your day-to-day -day yeah, activities. Oh -oh. And it's the one that's frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yes, oo. Oh -oh. mm -hmm. Kaya nga sabi namin... Um, usually they would say, arthritis lang naman yun eh, mm -hmm. hindi naman yun life-threatening, hindi naman yun importante, kunyari compared sa ibang mga sakit, di ba? Pero ang iniisip namin, kunyari for a 30-year-old male na may gouty arthritis, mm -hmm. kung hindi siya makakapagtrabaho, it's so frustrating on his part, di ba? So parang 30 years old pa lang, dapat hanggang 70 nagtatrabaho yan, pagka 30 di ka na makatrabaho. Wala ka ng income. Mm -hmm. So, in, lagi namin in-emphasize na we have to treat all these diseases. Huwag natin sila pabayaan. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Pero ang mga kabataan ba, Dr. Reina, like 10, 12 years old, mm -hmm. do they also have, you know, a possibility of having these uh, diseases na we've discussed? Yeah, uh, not gout, not osteoarthritis, but we have yung mga juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. Which we will discuss when we return. Yeah, oh, we'll oh. take a very short break okay. and when we come back, we'll mm -hmm. continue on with even the autoimmune, di ba? Yeah, Meron the autoimmune disorders. Meron din tayong mga tinatawag na yung sarili mong cells will be, you are considered as foreign bodies, yes. di ba? Mm -hmm. So please, dear viewers, stay tuned while we take a break here in the studio. And when we return, we'll continue with our discussion with Dr. Ina Abelia, a rheumatologist, on the health of our joints. Please stay tuned. Fifty-five, fifty-nine, sixty-seven, thirty-five years old, sixty-two. Meron na. Ako kay arthritis. Meron na eh. Wala po. Ano daw? Uh, gout, arthritis. Uh, bawal kumain ng mga mani. Uh, string beans, wala itong uh, pagkain na uh, nakaka-trigger ng arthritis sa parang ano, anong itlog, yung mga laman loob, yung hindi magbawal ng mga pots, yung mga laman loob, yung hard drinks, bawal uh, yan mag, mag, ano, mag, magsakit. Pag magkakaan ka 2 days to 3 days after, sakit siya. Ngayon, ngayon, no? sakit naman. <laughs> uh, ka kumakain ng mga ipinababawal na pagkain, o pagkarni. Dahil sa matanda na ako. A joint is the connection between two bones. Joints and their surrounding structures allow you to bend your elbows and knees. Wiggle your hips, bend your back, turn your head, and wave your fingers to say bye-bye. Yes, joints help you to enjoy your daily activities, but pain and swelling in these joints can take that joy away. Understand what causes painful joints and how to prevent and manage them here on Dynamic Living The Total You. Welcome back to Dynamic Living the Total You with our episode Joint House with our specialist Dr. Ina Abelia. So kanina po pinag-usapan namin ni Dr. Ina yung osteoarthritis, yung gouty arthritis. Heto naman ngayon eh yung tinatawag nating para sa mga kabataan Dr. Mm -hmm. Ina, mm -hmm. yung iyong tinatawag na juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Ano naman ito? Oh, kasi we have to say na 
minsan may misconception din na ang arthritis daw pang matanda lang. Hmm. Hindi, hindi pang matanda ang arthritis. May mga 12 years old, 9 years old, with, which presents with arthritis. So, meron tayong tinatawag ng mga autoimmune disorders sa mga, mga bata din ha. Mm -hmm. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Meron din yung mga systemic lupus erythematosus mm -hmm. which presents also with arthritis. So, generally speaking, ang autoimmune disorder is a disorder in the immune system. Kung baga yung sundalo ng dugo mm -hmm. natin, dapat siya yung lumalaban pag may virus at may bakterya na pumapasok. Nalilito siya. Instead na yung virus at yung bakterya ang nilalabanan niya, yung sariling cells yung nilalabanan. Mm -hmm. So for JRA, yung mga joints ng mga bata, mm -hmm. for lupus, pwede yung mga kidneys, yung sa skin, so yung mga sa joints. So uh, we have to correct the misconception na ang arthritis ay pang bata Totoo lang. Totoo yan Oo. eh. Kaya nga natin pinag-uusapan ngayon yan. Mm -mm. Kasi minsan, yung mga magulang, pag nakita nila, napansin nila na hirap naglakad yung mm -mm. anak nila, o kaya naman hirap na gamitin yung mga kamay nila kasi mm -mm. parang stiff nga yung ano. Mm -mm. O pag nagre-reklamo yung mga kabataan nila na, bakit ganito po ang nararamdaman ko? Mm -hmm. Eh, sasabihin lang naman ng mga magulang na, ah, wala, wala yan, yan, normal Oo. lang yan. Oo. Napagod ka lang Napagod kasi malikot ka. ka. Oo. Oo. Pero hindi dapat ganun hindi dapat, yung reaction. Oo, hindi dapat Lalo na kung merong inflammation or kung namamaga yung joints. Kasi meron ng mga arthritis na pang bata, which is katulad ng juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Very common yan sa mga 12 years old, 9 years old, yung mga ganyan. So dapat ipatingin pa rin yun dahil hindi lang pang matanda ang arthritis. And is it also a lifelong disease para yeah, sa mga Yeah, it is a lifelong kabataan. disease. Ibig sabihin na it's a chronic illness. Um, once you have it, hindi na yan siya mawawala. Katulad ng mga autoimmune disorders, Usually, ang sinasabi namin, para siyang diabetes, mm -hmm. na nandyan na siya, um, pero may mga gamot para i-control yung disease mm -hmm. process. Kaya mahalaga pa rin magpatingin. Magpat it's important unang-una para malaman kung anong klase yung arthritis mm -hmm. at ano yung tamang gamot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, siyempre, meron tayong juvenile rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. sa kabataan. Mm -hmm. Meron din tayong para sa adults. Yes. Ang, at saka ang set naman ng group ng mga tao na usually affected ng RA, yung younger age group, mm -hmm. yung nag-demonstrate pa, yung, oh, oh, yung pwede pang mag-bear ng, uh -huh. ng children, at saka more common sa females. Mas mm -hmm. marami ang females kumpara sa males. Unlike sa gout, mas madami ang males kumpara mm -hmm. sa females. So, ang rheumatoid arthritis is as an example of an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. And so, usually sila, Dr. Reina, eh, ano yung mga nararamdaman nila? Pareho lang din sa ibang mga arthritis? Uh, ang nararamdaman nila, karaniwan, ang involved um, mga kamay. Mm -hmm. uh, bilateral, ibig sabihin kanan at kaliwa, sabay, usually symmetrical ang swelling. And very uh, prominent yung history ng morning stiffness. Mm. Unlike diba sa osteoarthritis, yung, yung stiffness after prolonged immobility, sa rheumatoid arthritis, there's morning stiffness na pagkagising sa umaga, mm -hmm. more than one hour na sobrang hirap talaga na igalaw hindi yung mga joints. Hindi lang dahil sa malamig pag Hindi umaga. lang dahil sa malamig. So kahit Talagang, mainit yung panahon. Kahit mainit, basta pagkagising sa umaga, that's part of the criteria for the mm -hmm. diagnosis ng rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. Yung morning stiffness of more than an hour. Mm -hmm. So very specific yun na tinatanong sa mga pasyente, kailan niyo po ba nararamdaman yung sakit? Pagka ba madalas kayong maglaba mm -hmm. o madalas kayong mag luto o pagkagising niyo sa umaga. Di ba pag naglalaba at nagluluto, pwedeng sumakit dahil napagod. napagod. Uh -huh. Pero yung sa rheumatoid arthritis, it's more common upon waking up in the morning. Uh -huh. So, ibig sabihin noon, Dr. Raina, eh, pag sinabi niya sa iyo na pagising ko po sa umaga, heto po yung nararamdaman mm -hmm. ko. It's a giveaway already. A yes. telltale sign. Dapat uh -huh. pagpa Tingin ng agad, oh, oh. kung hindi wala na naman. Kesa yung masakit kapag naglaba, usually dahil lang sa pagod yun. Mm -hmm. Pero yung after yung sa pagkagising sa umaga, tas namamaga, mm -hmm. usually involved ang mga hand joints, babae, mm -hmm. weight-bearing age, uh, child-bearing mm -hmm. age. So, mas maganda na magpatingin para ma-diagnose. Mm -hmm. So, aside arthritis. from that, knowing na heto yung mga symptomatology mm -hmm. o yung mga dapat nararamdaman nila, magpatingin sila, mm -hmm. paano ninyo ito na-diagnose from the clinical history, of course, and the examination? Mm -hmm. Do you do also laboratory diagnostics here? Yes, we do laboratory tests. Very helpful sa amin ang mga laboratory tests for the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. We do the rheumatoid factor test sa dugo mm -hmm. yun. Mm -hmm. Tapos pag negative ang rheumatoid factor, kasi meron tayong tinatawag na zero negative na rheumatoid arthritis, may mga ibang test pa yung anti-CCP antibody mm -hmm. test. Pati x-ray, makakatulong din sa pag-diagnose ng rheumatoid For arthritis. For life din yan, doktora? For life din. Unfortunately, pag tinatanong nga ng pasyente, doktora, pang habang buhay na ba to, 
sasabihin, syempre sasabihin mo na panghabang buhay pero parang diabetes lang yan. Uh -huh. na as long as naiinom mo yung gamot mo, nasusunod mo yung doktor mo sa follow-up, regular ang follow-up, may mga gamot para hindi mag-progress uh -huh. at saka para naman hindi ma-deform yung mga buto mo at pwede mo pa rin magawa yung dapat mong gawin. Yun yung mahalaga, Dr. Reina. We uh -huh. have to, you know, remind, keep on reminding uh -huh. our viewers na pwede namang makontrol yes. at saka pwede naman silang maging highly functional yes. at uh -huh. pwede naman na hindi sila maging debilitated. Oo. Kasi yung fear ng iba, di ba? Pag sinabing nila, lifetime. Lifetime, parang, ha, wala oo, na ba akong magagawa? Yung takot, oo. Oo. Yun nga yung gusto rin namin na sabihin sa mga doktor din na katulad namin sa rheumatologist na i-explain ng mabuti sa pasyente, lalo na yung pagkunyari rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. na pang matagalan yung gamot, pang habang buhay yung gamot, pero... If you take it on a regular basis, you follow up on a regular basis. At saka dapat din sabihin na may mga gamot na matagal ang effect. Mm -hmm. Katulad nung talagang mainstay ng gamot for rheumatoid arthritis, which is methotrexate, it's a slow-acting anti-rheumatic drug. So it takes at least six weeks bago maramdaman yung effect. So pag in-explain mo yun, sasabi mo, wag ko kayong mag-e-expect na when you start taking the methotrexate, you feel good right mm -hmm. away. Kasi if you... You don't explain that. Pag, sin pag binigay mo lang yung gamot na yun without telling them what to expect, sabi niya, bakit two weeks na akong umiinom ng gamot, hindi pa ako gumagaling. Lilipat yan sa ibang doktor. At saka hindi, magagalit siya sa'yo. Magagalit siya sa'yo, kaya sabihin lilipat niya, siya. Sabihin niya, kakalat niya yan. O, si Dr. Raina, hindi marunong yun. Ha? Huwag ka pumunta <laughs> doon. <laughs> Ang maganda pa, kung lilipat siya, ibig sabihin, yung sa, tam sa tama, tama pa rin doktor, kasi uh -huh. hindi naman lahat nakakapagbigay ng methotrexate, diba? So you have to explain na it's a slow-acting anti-rheumatic drug. That's why we are giving you pain relievers kasabay nung pag-inom mo ng methotrexate para to tide you over mm -hmm. the pain habang ine-expect natin yung effect ng methotrexate. And they're supposed to do their follow-ups, <laughs> diba? Regularly, because all the medications that have to be maintained, may mga side effects sa atay, mm -hmm. you have to have no history of tuberculosis, which is very common sa mga Pilipino, tsaka yung, yung sa hepatitis. So, they have to have a regular check-up. And what you mentioned mm -hmm. now na yung mga side effects na yan, mm -hmm. eh, you know, something na they should be aware of. Yes. So, in other words, informed dapat talaga ang mga pasyente on what they're taking, what And are the what, probabilities. what would they expect mas, uh -huh. mas ang side effect? Mm -hmm. Kasi, if you don't talaga, ma mapapagod sila mag-follow up. Mm -hmm. Kasi they will say, lilipat dito, lilipat. Then, hindi sila gumagaling. Magsha-shopping na sila. Magsha-shopping na sila. Tapos, they feel the side effects na without feeling the good effects. Mm -hmm. Titigil nila yung gamot. Tapos, they will come back to you deformed na mas mahirap na siyang gamot. Or kaya naman pumunta sila sa yung mga herbalists o kaya yung mga iba pang mga ano dyan Oo. because they feel na, na ineffective tayo in the medical yes. science. Diba? And minsan, pinapatigil yung gamot mm -hmm. which is very, yun yung parang Ayaw natin mangyari, di ba? Have you had instances wherein your patients would come to you and then although you have properly explained to them mm -hmm. eh, na ganun nga ang mangyayari and yet they fail to do a regular follow-up with you? Many One. times. Number two, how do you handle that when they come into you and then they come back to you and tell you, Dr. Reina, talagang hindi ko na po kaya ito. Very frequently. Kasi... Uh -huh. Uh, sa totoo lang, very frustrating talaga yung sa mga sakit na hinahandle namin, eh, di ba? Parang sasabihin ba, meron pa tong gamot na sasabihin mo sa akin, I will take and I will no longer have the disease. You all will, you'll always answer, hindi po, kasi it's pang matagal ang gamot yan. So, natural sa pasyente that they would look for other sources of help. So, magpupunta sa ibang mga doktor o yung mga herbal, yung mga iba pang types of treatment, ang problema, when they are asked to discontinue the medications that you prescribe, or they are asked to continue something na nakakagaling, like na, steroids. Oh, oh, yung mahilig sila, di ba? <laughs> yung shotgun treatment, yung yes, steroids. Oh, steroids. Eh. Pero pa nga tinatawag na mag-asawang gamot, uh -huh. na I think it's both a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and steroids. Uh -huh. Kasi if you take those continuously, you feel like you're Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Maganda ang pakiramdam mo. So, ang tendency mo is tuloy-tuloy mo siyang iinumin. Uh -huh. So, when they come back to you, malalaki na yung mukha, uh -huh. nagmamanas na because of the effect of steroids. So, maraming ganun. Kasi maybe because they find very slow yung treatment and they probably did not understand kung ano yung disease process. Pero sana, ito yung sa, sa show ng mga ganito, ma-educate din natin yung mga pasyente at yung ibang mga doktor din na mm -hmm. Yung mga kasamahan din natin. Mga kasamahan din natin. Oo, na kasi explain. Uh -huh. Importante sa mga gamot na gan ay sa mga pasyenteng may mga autoimmune disorders sa pangmatagalan ang sakit na ma-explain sa pasyente what to expect. 
kung kailan nila in, um, maa, ano, nagagaling sila ng kaunti, ano yung mga pwedeng side effects. Kasi you empower them to decide for themselves also. And that is what is important. Eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi minsan, tatakbo sila, mag-google sila. Yes. Eh. Pagkatapos, alam mo naman sa internet ngayon, ang daming mm -hmm. mga data. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, hindi mo na masala kung saan doon ang tama at mali. Uh -oh. diba? So, balikan natin si autoimmune, si mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. So, kung pang matagalan mm -hmm. siya, eh, ano bang masasabi natin? Hope beyond that or hope even with that? Um, what we always tell them is there are a lot of medications available now to control rheumatoid arthritis. Ang, ang gagandahan nga ngayon sa rheumatology, very dynamic mm -hmm. yung mga gamot. We have these mga biologics na tinatawag na parang um, mga missile siya na guided. Yung talagang part ng immune system na talagang Directed specifically siya. dun sa rheumatoid arthritis. Kaya lang, the, ano, the drawback to that is it's very, those medications are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, medications that are targeted to a specific mm -hmm. uh, disease or organ, are they are very expensive. expensive. Even in the treatment of cancer, yeah, yung oh, mga bago natin yun na. na mga targeted modalities, yes. mahal mm -hmm. talaga siya. Mahal talaga. There, it always comes with a price. Mm -hmm. eh. Pero ang mahalaga lang doon, sa hindi maka-afford noon, there is still hope for them, di ba? Yeah, because for example, PCSO now helps, parang they provide some of the medications mm -hmm. as long as they, you give them the proper pa complete papers mm -hmm. like a medical abstract, treatment protocol. Sometimes they get, they're able to get the medications from PC, it's PCSO. Mm -hmm. Oh nga naman, kasi mm -hmm. if you really total the meds that they have to oh, take oh. over the year, mahal yun ha? Kahit nga ako pag sinasabi ko sa pasyente, that's why I lay it down to them. Uh -huh. These are the options. Kasi kung ikokompute ko, parang yung sweldo, Punta na lang sa gamot. Mm -hmm. Paano yung ibang pangangailangan nila? Kaya so, siguro yung iba hindi na umiinom ng gamot oh, nila. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a reality that's also. That's a reality. So I how, can, how can we help them? Mm -hmm. Actually, yung, what we do now talaga is we encourage them to go to PCSO. Mm -hmm. uh, the only help that we can offer to them is we do the medical... Ang hirap gumawa ng medical abs. Kasi you have to write it. That they do that. Yes. After my clinic, what I do, lahat ng mga pasyente kailangan ng medical abs. Doon ko tatapusin after I've seen them all. Tapos they return the following day to get the medical abs, the treatment protocol, and the prescription. Mm -hmm. But it's the least that we can do that mm -hmm. so that they can get the medications from the PCSO. Yan yung masaklap dyan sa kinuha mong specialty eh. Nakita mo ba yan noong nag-apply ka ng special Hindi. Ito? Ang, ang naisip ko lang nun, ayoko nang tinatawag ko sa gabi. Gusto ko sabihin, titignan ko yung pasyente bukas. <laughs> Kasi only, akala ko walang toxic. <laughs> only to find, mas mahirap yung iyong buhay ngayon. So, tingnan natin. Aside sa <coughs> rheumatoid arthritis, mm -mm. ang itong systemic lupus is one mm -mm. of those that will also affect the joints, yes. the, the muscles, mm -mm. di ba? Pero ito nga, multi-organ ang Multi kanyang effect mm -hmm. niya, no? yung affected ano niya. So, how, does, how do they present to you? You when they come and see you? Is it uh, sometimes they get diagnosed to have SLE because of the arthritis that they have? Uh, it's not very common na arthritis mm -hmm. a manifestation. Ang, uh, sa mga nakikita ko, ang usually very uh, non-specific nga ay parang fatigue, mm -hmm. yung parang parating Papagod pagod. Oh. Oo, tapos they will tell you parang may lagnat, feeling nila lagnat mm -hmm. or nagkakarashes. Mm -hmm. yung, uh, yung arthritis, it's not very, it's not the initial manifestation. So you have to have a clinical eye para masabi, ito yung age group na pwedeng the risk of having SLE is mataas. So you have to work the patient up. Kasi minsan, pagod lang. Yung mm -hmm. fatigue lang na matagal na hindi nawawala o without any precipitating factor or fever, fever na unknown, uh -huh. of unknown origin sinasabi mm -hmm. hindi alam. So, arthritis would still be a very um, important manifestation pero hindi yun yung pinaka-common. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the connective tissue disorders. Mm -hmm. Kasi kahit papaano, eh, alam naman natin na meron tayong tinatawag na connective tissue. Kasi mm -hmm. kanina, binanggit mo joints, mm -hmm. di ba? Sinabi mo <coughs> muscles. Mm -hmm. Tapos ngayon, connective tissues. Mm -hmm. Kasi yan, nasasakupan yan ng inyong specialty. Yes, kasama pa rin. Kasi minsan nakala yung mga arthritis lang yun sa amin. Mm -hmm. Pero may mga connective tissue disease katulad ng scleroderma, mm -hmm. which is naaapektuhan yung mga muscles na... Ano, nag, parang tumitigas, nagkakaroon ng fibrosis. Your skin, yung skin manifestations, tumitigas yung skin. Uh, tapos, meron din tinatawag na mga vasculitis mm -hmm. na namamaga yung mga blood vessels. Merong large vessels, may mga small vessels. So, all of these are actually autoimmune disorders that can affect yung connective tissue disease. What about fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia. Wait, alam mo, masakit yun ha? At saka mahirap madiagnose uh -huh. yan. Parang lately na lang na nadiagnose yan. It's yung parang lahat masakit. Mm -hmm. Mula Ulo batok yata, hanggang, hanggang oh. laman, laman. So, 
It's a clinical diagnosis. When you've ruled out other connective tissue diseases, that's normal lahat mm -hmm. yung parameters. Tapos positive yung trigger points mo, yung fibromyalgia. Commonly, mas ano yan sa mga babae? Mas common siya sa mas babae? Mas common sa mga babae. Mm -hmm. Tapos usually, they come in yung parang hirap na hirap na sila kasi hindi nila malaman kung ano yung sakit nila. Kasi hindi gumagaling sa mga pain relievers, naapektuhan ang tulog, nagkakaroon ng depression, pati yung mga bowel movement, minsan naaapektuhan. So parang iniisip nila, ano na ba itong mga sakit ko? Baka cancer na or mm -hmm. ano? When in fact, it's fibromyalgia. But the awareness now for fibromyalgia is um, better compared to how it was like about five years ago. Yes. Noong oh, araw, eh, parang wala siya, hindi siya pumasok. Parang muscle spasm oh, lang, mga oh, ganun, parang ganun, ganun lang. lang. But now diba? it's a, a diagnosis and there's a lot of treatment options for fibromyalgia. Well, what's new with your practice? Um, ang Kasi di ba, like for example, for cancer treatment, may something new sila eh. And then also, heto sa cancer naman, eh, in, the, in terms of diagnostics, they have improved mm -hmm. already. Sa rheumatology na practice, what's new with it now? The new thing and what's the, so dynamic about rheumatology now is the biologics, yung targeted cell treatment talaga. So meron na rin talaga kayong oh, ganyan? meron na talaga. And you're doing that now here in yeah, the Philippines? Yeah, we are doing that. There are so many options available now. And... Sinasabi nga namin, ang dami ng options, pero babaan nyo naman yung presyo. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you have introduced that to your pair, patients yeah, already? Yeah, my, my patients are using mga uh -huh. biologics now. And how is the response rate? Um, the problem is they cannot take it continuously. Why? Because it's so expensive. Ah, because of the expense. Yes, oh. it's expensive. Pero those patients who are able to afford it very seldom, continuously, they get good response from the biologics. Ito na yung area na... Um, yung mismong cell na involved sa rheumatoid arthritis, for example, or sa mga scleroderma, for example, yun na yung tinatarget no, for SLE, for example, yun na yung tinatarget ng mga biologics. And you, you believe, Dr. Reina, na, you know, in the coming years mm -hmm. pa, eh, there will be something newer pa talaga in terms of managing this arthritis to the point na pwede kaya nating masabi na magkakaroon ng cure o wala talagang cure ito? I think there should always be hope for mm -hmm. cure, no? Mm -hmm. Parang parang napaka ano naman if you say na wala nang cure. Parang araw, di ba yung HIV sinabi natin oh, na parang diba? ano na takot oh, na takot na tayo pero ngayon look at them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even the biologics now that's a lot of improvement compared to gold which was therapeutic before for rheumatoid arthritis. So, I think there they there will be something good in the future for mm -hmm. rheumatology. Okay, now mm -hmm. let's talk about your patients that you get to see on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. the, do these patients when they come to you, you know, lalong lalo na yung with the severe um, symptoms or kaya yung mga severities nila is all, already increasing, does it drag you down also, you know, in your practice? Oh, sometimes it can be emotionally draining, but what's more, most emotionally draining for me are those patients who are not able to afford yung complete treatment. For example, lupus patients mm -hmm. who are very young patients and cannot afford to just do the laboratory tests and get the simple medications that are necessary. That's the most draining. Mm -hmm. And so practice. how do you handle that? Um, usually, I give them the option. I will tell them uh, this hospital like PGH would accept um, you as charity patients so that you have a record there. You get treatment for free. Um, yung mga doktor, um, magagaling naman sila. But sometimes, even yung travel from their place to PGH, for example. Wala pang pamasahe? Oo, oh, oh. walang pamasahe. So how, how does Dr. Reina unwind? Um, knowing, that you're dealing with, <laughs> knowing that you're dealing with so much, you know, the stressful patients. It's not as stressful as the other specialties, but oh, yeah? it's emotionally draining <laughs> yes. for those who are not able to afford the medications. Siyempre, we go out with Friends, uh -huh. uh -huh. we, we travel, paminsan-minsan. Uh -huh. minsan. So that's how, that's how you unwind. Oh. Eh. So how do you see yourself like 10 years from today, still practicing oh, rheumatology? Still practice 10 years from today? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Magsishift ka na rin. Magigift dropping na lang ako. <laughs> that was my, ano, my initial pa pangarap uh -huh. sa buhay nung na, bata pa ako. Na maging gift, gift dropper sa SM. <laughs> SM pa talaga, oh, hindi National SM. Bookstore. SM. <laughs> Ayaw mo National Bookstore na lang. Masyadong complicated yung ano nila. <laughs> so, Dr. Reina, eh, the future for rheumatology in the mm -hmm. Philippines. 
what, what I'm hoping is that patients will have more access to the medications. Sana mas may support from the government na so that the patients can afford the medications because these are very helpful. Tapos yung mga support group, kasi yung the mere fact na makausap nila yung pasyente with the same disease, which I've, we, I think we've started that in rheumatology, may SLE group, may rheumatoid arthritis group, kahit na in our private practice, we have our own arthritis group, yung mga ganun lang, mga lay activities na, that are supportive of the patients, I think more of that and support from the government. Yeah, so how would you, you know, advise, you know, the family members, mm -hmm. the people around a person who has an arthritic disorder? Uh, the reason why I actually have an arthritis group in Lipa mm -hmm. is so that when I do lectures, for the patients, kasama yung pamilya, mm -hmm. so that they will understand what the patients are going through. For example, yung gout, na ang laki-laki nung mama, sasabihin, hindi na ako makakilos, tapos sasabihin mm -hmm. ng asawa, ang arte-arte ho niyan, doktor, ang liit-liit nung maga. Naririnig mo talaga yan, sinasabi oh, ng mga harap, partners? Oo, uh sa -huh. sasabihin, doktor, ang OA niyan, kasi ang liit-liit nung maga, parang maganon ko lang, galit na siya. Sabi uh -huh. ko, sa gout kasi, totoong uh -huh. ganun, sobrang masakit, mahanginan lang ng electric fan. So, yung edu you educate not just the patient but the partners. people or, or the oh. partners or people they live with so that they would understand also what the patient is going through. Yes, kasi unless these people around that patient will yeah. understand, mm -mm. they will not be able to give him the support that yeah, he the, or she needs. The support no? is very oh. important. Importante yun. Ako, mm -mm. Kapag sinabi Lalo mo, na talagang it's a chronic thing, mm -mm. di ba? Mm -mm. So, hindi siya nawawala eh. Mm -mm. Kaya yun yung sadness na story when oh, the, oh. the illness is chronically yes. there and mm -mm. persistently mm -mm. there. Eh, ano pa ba ang pwede nating gawin? So, Dr. Raina, ano pa ang pwede natin gawin nga sa ating mga pasyente in terms of, you know, encouraging them to take their medications aside from, you know, the, seeing them, you know, seeking regularly. consult regularly? Oh. I, the most important thing that I want them to remember is healthy lifestyle talaga. Mm -hmm. Kasi basically, that's, yun yung pinaka-importante, eh, whether it's osteoarthritis, it's gouty arthritis, it's rheumatoid arthritis. Because, for example, for rheumatoid arthritis, smoking... Mm -hmm. It aggravates the symptoms. Hindi siya yung direct cause, pero it aggravates it. It's been known na... Alcoholism din, ano? Alcohol, yeah, mm -hmm. for gout. Mm -hmm. So, yung healthy living, parang sa lahat ng tao, whether you have arthritis, whether you have a rheumatologic problem or not, that's very important. Yes, thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Reina, for your time with us. So, your message now that you would want to relay to our viewers and to our radio listeners. Okay, so I just want, gusto ko lang na ipaalam sa ating mga manonood na ang rheumatology ay isang field na nagdi-deal sa mga sakit sa mga kasukasuan tsaka sa musculoskeletal system kasi hindi pa ganun yung ka-aware yung mga tao. Hindi lahat ng gamot ng isang ang gamot ng isang pasyente ay pwedeng effective sa isang Kanya. pasyente. So dapat magpatingin pa rin sa doktor para malaman kung ano yung klase ng sakit meron ka para mabigyan ng tamang gamot at maibsan yung mga nararamdaman. Yes, dear viewers, remember this. Una sa lahat po, pwede naman ang prevention. Pero if prevention is not gonna work, then at least we would do something by being aware, seeing the right kind of doctors so that you can get the right kind of treatment. Mahalaga po yun. At yun nga sinasabi pa ulit-ulit ni Dr. Ina, a healthy lifestyle will go a very long way. So yung ating mga kabataan, habang maliliit pa po sila, itrain na po it right to eat healthy, to exercise, to move around, and to have a healthy attitude. Even po sa Biblia, sabi po sa Psalm 34, 19 to 20, God will actually protect all of our bones and not one of them will be broken. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Dynamic living, making the best of you on fire. Dynamic living, sharing the faith where you If you have been blessed by this program, share hope and help us continue to bring hope everywhere. Send your donations to South Philippine Union Conference through any of the bank details shown here. Hope Channel. Sharing love, changing lives. Of course! Sometimes. <laughs> Why not? Mm. Yes!
My brother. My mom. And of course, my dad. The policeman. Boss. My teachers. My grandpa. When I am threatened. When he stares at me. When I hear his whistle. When they raise their voice. When they call me by my full name. Whenever he calls me like this. Hey, come on, bro. Because they're the love. He's older than me. Um, my grave would be at stake. They're my parents. Since I'm younger than him, I'll be fired if I don't. <laughs> you know. Obedience is more than a state of being obedient. It is our willful practice of obedience. Conscious decision to obey policemen. To obey your your parents. Parents. It means submission to the rules. Which are meant to keep us safe. Likewise, obedience is a manifestation of love. I respect my parents. I love my mom, I love my dad. Older brother. Besides, it says we obey our grandparents, our older brother, our people of authority, our boss, our parents, and the Lord. Lord. For this is right. We are people and we love to get connected. We connect as families because of birth. We connect as friends because we click. And we connect as communities because we care. Seventh-day Adventists are people who connect in communities called congregations, which in turn connect to form conferences, who connect together to form unions, divisions, and the general conference. Why do we connect? It starts with a connection to the Creator who invites us on a spiritual journey. When we journey together, we can help each other along the way. This journey is a journey of a lifetime. And as we learn and grow, life becomes filled with meaning and purpose. Our greatest joy is in helping others along the way. Wherever you are on your journey, we believe that we have something to offer that can make your life more whole. So the next time you see a Seventh-day Adventist, remember, you're not looking at someone who stands alone. They are connected to a world church that has 18 million members gathered in 13 divisions comprised of 122 unions formed by 600 conferences serving in 140,000 congregations in 208 countries who worship in 924 languages, and they all want to connect with you.